Okay, so I've been going through all the One Piece movies, and I've officially hit Strong World. And before I can watch Strong World, we apparently need to read Chapter Zero, because this movie comes with required reading. And that's weird to me, because this stuff isn't supposed to be canon, right? Is this half canon? So Chapter Zero introduces us to Shiki, the main villain of the story. Chapter Zero mostly sets up a lot of the background as to who this character is, because this character is apparently not a nobody. Garp knows him very well. He's casually talking to Whitebeard. He's clashed a couple of times with Roger. Like, that's a pretty high bar. And when I start thinking about how this movie is framing the bad guys and our crew together, there's a lot of very interesting challenges that I think we're facing. In Chapter Zero, Shiki has this stereotypical plan to take over the world, but this time he wants the help of Roger, which I think makes it a little bit interesting. Seeing just how difficult it has been to obtain the One Piece, Shiki attempting in one way or another to team up with Roger is not that bad of an idea. You got your entire cheat sheet right there in front of you. And what I find interesting about Shiki is how this once notorious pirate has essentially become lost to history by going to Impel Down. I like it. It makes sense. It gives context as to why no one's heard of him. And so the movie starts off with him finally breaking out. He has this whole new, but still very stereotypical plan to take over the world. Because they always got to have one of those. So this finally takes us to Strong World. This movie, just like the last movie, is now officially two hours long. I feel like that's going to be a trend. And seeing how Strong World handled it, I think it's for the better. There are a lot of scenes in Strong World that did not need to be as long as they were. In fact, the entire opening of Strong World, I think, is a little bit unnecessary. It goes on for like 10, 15 minutes I think of them just purely interacting with their environment. We see Luffy interacting and then attacking multiple of these big animals and then we see the big animals fighting each other. It is a long sequence that is just full of spectacle for the sake of spectacle and honestly I'm here for it because it let me know that we had enough time to actually get through the story unlike a lot of the other stories which felt like they were trying to do so much in so little time that they had set up everything within like the first five minutes in this one we don't even explain what's going on until like 15 minutes in it just sits you down and throws stuff at you and is just like here just look at this spectacle just take this all in we're gonna explain things in a bit but hold on you gotta watch the sumoplex if there was a word that I could describe Strong World with, it's fun. I think I was watching this movie and I started to smile and that's when I realized that, oh, oh, I'm in good hands. This actually feels like One Piece if it was a movie. That should sound normal, but it's an oddity. I think the actual story itself plays it extremely safe for One Piece terms. As I mentioned, Shiki is a stereotypical bad guy who wants to take over the world in one way or another. And he, in short, comes across the Straw Hats, notices that Nami is a good navigator, and decides to kidnap her. And the rest of the crew has to go save her. That feels like a really safe move for any story, period. But I do think the things that help levitate this movie into something better are stuff like the world building and the character interactions. For example, I really loved Shiki's Devil Fruit ability. It's a very basic ability. Anything he touches, he can make levitate. But we could have easily made that boring. I could imagine a situation in which he's just like a generic character who lifts up like a rock and throws it and that's as far as it goes. But Shiki instead uses that ability to levitate entire sections of an island pretty much up into the sky to create floating islands, all of which are very different in scenery. We get jungles and snow and this autumn section. Every single aspect of Strong World to me looked gorgeous. Similar to other rulers or warlords, Shiki has a group of people that are trapped on these floating islands and these people don't know a lot about their own culture or biology. They're very similar to Skypeans but have different wing placements and don't seem to understand or attempt to use their wings until the end of the movie. And just like any typical One Piece story, uh, there's tragedy there the more the story goes on for. For example, some of these characters are like servants in this like underground, like weird isolated section on the island. And a huge part of the population isn't even on that village anymore because Shiki moves them around a lot. Families are split apart and we see how the infrastructure Shiki creates is used to torture the residents of the island. How they're forced to serve Shiki and how they have to worry about the plants and animals that are harmful to the people of this island. So what did I think about the villains as characters? 
And that puts the villains in a very weird spot. The villains are doing very bland, evil bad guy stuff, but they're doing it in a very interesting way. And while they're doing it in a very interesting way, my thoughts on the villains as characters were... Eh. The villains in this movie all have a gimmick that they do over and over again, and it didn't really work for me. I just thought you were my grandma for a second there. Does anyone in your stinking family look like a gorilla or what? <laughs> But I also didn't despise them. They're just okay, you know? They're, they're quirky guys. Let them be quirky guys. The humor around the villains to me isn't spectacular or anything, which is kind of a shame because the rest of the movie has a lot of good jokes in it. Hey, it's a Sunny! Luffy! <gasps> Nami! <laughs> you gotta do it with flair. Let me show Wait, you. I'm still stuck! <laughs> they're hungry. They want meat, not dried up old bones. Oh. Hey, so I'm not good enough for you, huh? Ah! I'm gonna die! I'm gonna die! It had good jokes in it. I really enjoyed how they characterized the crew in this movie, especially all the moments where the characters are shown to trust each other. Like I remember at the beginning, all of these ants are going after Frankie and Robin and Frankie's about to blast them, but we see Brooke coming through and as soon as he goes through, Frankie and Robin don't react anymore. Despite the bugs still going in their direction, they're like, he got it, he got it. We're not gonna get hurt anymore. He took care of them already. And I think that is beautiful. You know what else is beautiful? We're gonna go fast here because I don't really have much to add beyond praise. The music was memorable. The characters actually changed outfits. And you know how I feel about outfit swaps. If there was a word to describe this movie, it's spectacle. It focuses so much more on spectacle. There is not much fighting in this movie. Like even when we do fight, we tend to cut away to other scenes, maybe showing one character doing one attack before cutting away. Why? Because that one attack is the spectacle, and then it's over. In this movie, I want to say there's like three combat encounters, okay? So let's talk about the combat encounters. First, we have Shiki, who's stealing Nami, doing this, uh, again, amazing power move where he throws the entire ship down. Visually, that's pretty hype. And then using the ship to stop anyone from trying to reach him. It is short, almost no one gets to react to this attack, and it's very visually interesting. The second is a climactic fight halfway through the movie, where we are building up to Shiki, so the whole crew loses to Shiki, and it's not really that big of a fight either. Every character gets around one, maybe two attacks in before Shiki puts the whole crew down. So again, it's not very long, and the moves are cool. We are emphasizing spectacle. In round three, the cast changes outfits, breaks in dramatically, and I think for the first time in like the whole series, shoots up the place. <laughs> what? It is so out of nowhere for the crew to use guns to blast Shiki's hideout. It's a bit odd because that's not how they operate, but also it's pretty cool. It is that spectacle. And that's how I would characterize this movie. At times we see the cast fighting occasionally for like a second or two, but it's always in cutaways. If Luffy gets down in a fight, we barely get to see it happen. It's a bit controversial because we didn't really get to see a lot of the fight despite everything that happened, but what we did get to see was fun. So I forgive it. If you poke around enough, there's a lot of strange oddities in this movie, like how the whole crew at one point was going to turn back and head into East Blue, or how Shiki seemingly had to drop everything he was doing to kidnap Nami. There's some like really weird shaky ground here, but I forgive it because it was fun. Good movie. That's it. We're done here.